and also on the random drug testing uh, as reported in the paper this morning. So in relation to the speed tolerance adjustments, uh, this is the third in a series of adjustments that uh, have taken place since the 1st of July last year. We've always uh, been open that we were going through this adjustment process and that will continue. This point will not be the final uh, adjustment that we will make. We don't publicise the tolerances that we are setting, but we are moving our way through the uh, speed zones and the speed limits that we're uh, interested in. Today's adjustments relate to the 40, 50 and 70 kilometre speed zones. Specifically on the 40 kilometre speed zones, we're most interested in those because it, it's coinciding with the back to school program, where we are seeing many people in an area that they've not got any experience in, other people who are returning to areas uh, which they need to uh, consider road safety. So uh, 40, 50 and 70 zones as of today's adjustments, but as I say, there will be more adjustments in the future. Sorry, was that 40, 50 and 70 or 40, 60? 40, 50 and 70 zones today, yep. Well, I've had no uh, adverse comments referred to me. Uh, obviously, we're only early in the morning, but what we do know in terms of the school environments that we see uh, um, large numbers of students that are attending school for the first time. We see many parents and carers returning to the school environment. And we also see people who are used to the school environment, experienced students returning, uh, and they can easily become distracted. So motorists uh, need to pay attention to the speed limit, drive to the conditions and be conscious that other people in that general area uh, are moving around and if we can get through this uh, next week or so being conscious of that, that'll be great news for everybody. Um, in terms of police out and around schools, is this year that much different from other years? Are there more police out this year? Uh, we'll see the same taskings through Road Policing Command and through other general duties environments uh, for police to be, have a presence around school zones. You may not see them there every day in every school crossing, but they will visit a whole variety of school crossings over the next few days, uh, just to show that presence, to encourage people to drive safely uh, and to remind people of what the conditions and the circumstances are and that they should comply with the speed, zo speed zone and the speed limits. Okay, well we have seen an increase in the number of detections, but we've also seen an increase in the hours of deployment. So it's very difficult to compare one period to another because you have to take account for the hours of deployment and the number of detections. But what we are seeing is a reduction in the average rate of detection in terms of the speed of vehicles going through the, the radar detection side. So that's encouraging. Obviously we would like to see less detections and we would we would we would be encouraged if we could continue to see the speeds reducing as vehicles are detected. The tolerance adjustments also relate only to speed camera enforcement. Uh, enforcement in relation to other types of speeding detection will continue and the tolerance adjustments don't relate to those. Officers will continue to use their discretion in that type of speed enforcement. No, no, we won't go down that low. Uh, we, we know where we want to settle with these adjustments uh, uh, and that will take account of a whole variety of uh, circumstances for people, but certainly we won't be going to a one, one kilometre tolerance adjustment at this stage. Can you comment at all about how Queensland's tolerances compare to other states? Uh, well, no state publicises their uh, tolerance levels, so uh, I can only speak to uh, you know, uh, information which is generally available, so I can't make an authoritative uh, claim to that. But we've uh, reviewed our circumstances, we've looked at the levels we were at previously. Uh, the Commissioner has spoken a number of times about wanting to see speeds reduced, so we're establishing a tolerance level uh, which accommodates the road conditions, the circumstances that people will drive, the vehicles that they're driving in, and a whole range of other matters. Well, I'd avoid the myths. Uh, the way to uh, ensure that if you're moving through an area is to stick to the speed limit. And uh, we do have some adjustment tolerance, but uh, we won't be publicising that. Can you comment on the number of bookings at all this morning, or is there any excessive speeds in the 40 zone? I, I haven't got a report on that uh, as, of, as of yet. Uh, the data comes through on the system uh, over a 24 hour period, but. Uh, uh, you know, I would encourage anyone in a school zone moving near a school zone to be very conscious of the environment they're in uh, and to act in a way that ensures their safety and the safety of people in and around that speed area. Is there a Barton school legs? Oh, sorry. Okay. They had 
the um, police car there and it had the lights on um, flashing near where the school zone was. I don't know, is that is that a, a way of just alerting people without booking them as such? Oh, look, there's a whole range of things that can be done. Uh, at various times uh, throughout this year, we expect to see a program called the Pilot Program where at various stages of the school year, in specific locations, we would anticipate that we'll have police vehicles moving through the speed zones, showing people what the speed limits are. So in, that might be happening in some areas today, but it's going to be a more coordinated program uh, throughout the year. Uh, well, look, that's, uh, that's been a problem uh, ever since we've been uh, managing intoxication, whether it be through alcohol or, or drugs. Uh, clearly, people, some people display indicia, which is not consistent with the readings that we get on the breathalyser. So we've always had the opportunity to take blood in those circumstances. The, the drug testing program commenced in December 2007. Since then, we've seen about 110,000 people tested throughout Queensland. And the rate of testing would overall would be about one in every 27. So we test for cannabis, uh, methamphetamine and ecstasy. Um, so, you know, we would like to see that rate much lower, um, uh, so, sorry, much much more improved in terms of the number of tests and the, and the number of positives that we get. Uh, and the, the testing that we've done over the Christmas campaign has been based on intelligence basis, known, other known information and prioritisation of tasking. So over the last few weeks, the ratio has been about one in 15. But as I say, overall on the program, since 2007, it's been about one in every 27 tested. So, so what's the actual change then? If you've, if you've always been able to test blood, was it, was it, was it, was it there was a change? If we've, uh, we've always been able to test uh, for blood samples, but the testing at the moment for random drug testing is through a mouth swab and then a secondary analysis if the mouth swab uh, turns positive. So it's a, it's a different type of testing. So the drug testing unit was established in 2007, and that's the unit that does this uh, testing by way of taking mouth swabs. So those increases over the Christmas period to do with increased patrols of drug testing, or just increased usage of what do you think? Okay, well the drug testing unit has a staff of 24 people. Uh, they're tasked uh, on an intelligence basis uh, to specific areas. Uh, where we see corresponding uh, changes in uh, drug use through other measures. The taskings this year through Christmas have been uh, have seen a testing rate of about 1 in 15, uh, but that's also corresponding with the amount of testing done and the locations that they were testing in. Do you find it's um, just as much of a problem in regions where there's a significant metro area? Yeah, the drug testing unit has a responsibility to provide a service statewide. So those figures I've given you of the one in 27, that's a statewide figure uh, since 2007. Do you, do you know, do you have any figures or do you know any, anything anecdotally about regional areas? Uh, well, look, it all depends on the you know, circumstances. Uh, various types of drugs might become more prevalent in communities at various types of times, which is an unfortunate reality. Obviously, policing of those is done in a whole range of ways. Uh, so you can see a spike in one particular result based on the availability of a particular drug in that particular community at that time. But overall, the testing rate across the three styles of testing that we do is one in 27. When you're talking about intelligence, what exactly are you saying? Uh, well, we can get information that comes to us from other police resources in relation to uh, drug use in a particular area or the availability of drugs in a particular area. Um, and we can then task our resources to accommodate that intelligence and that information and ensure that we have a strong presence. When it comes to the speed <coughs> and reducing the tolerances, again, looking at regional areas, is it, is it much more of a problem in regional areas? Than uh, well, speeding in any street uh, is a problem, uh, whether it be on a regional road or in a, in a back street. Uh, the, the speed limit is set based on safety parameters. Those speed limits are set by experts mm -hmm. in road safety. And at the moment, we're seeing an assessment being carried out by transport and main roads in relation to a range of environments and whether the speed levels in those environments are appropriate. Uh, so we don't set the levels, we enforce the levels. Uh, but you know, my, my message is pretty simple. The speed limit is set, stick to the speed limit, drive according to the conditions, ensure your own safety and the safety of other people in the general area. Do you have different tolerances for regional areas? No, we have a set tolerance rate across the state. Demographic 
differences between those who drink drive and those who drug drive? No, not really. There's a, uh, you know, the availability of drugs is uh, is there for people uh, across the community. What we, our message in relation to uh, drugs, whether they be prescription drugs or uh, illegal drugs, is not to use those drugs if you're driving a motor vehicle. Um, if you're taking prescription drugs, you should comply with the advice you get from medical uh, specialists, pharmacists and so forth, and the instructions on the package. Um, anything that inhibits your ability to drive, that brings into safety, into question the safety of your practice and the safety of other people is, is not endorsed and we would ask people to be mindful of that when they're driving a motor vehicle. Just on what's happening to your work, have you given us any updates? No, no, I don't know. No, I don't know anything about that. All right? Thanks. Thank you. I had to fit